All right, everyone. So next up, um, we have the co-founder of L4, Liam Horn. He's going to be telling us about an awesome, awesome layer two technology, state channels, um, particularly what they call counterfactual. So welcome, Liam. Clap, come on now. There we go. All right. Um, is, that, is that TV show the slides or no? It should? Oh, okay, that's fine. I'll just look up here. All right, so um, yeah, I'm going to talk about counterfactual. I only have 15 minutes, so this is going to be like a super streamlined ELI 5, just get the basics across talk. But the goal, um, am I supposed to have a clicker as well? Probably this, right? The goal is to just explain how, how it all works and why state channels are interesting to build on top of. So quick note, uh, my name is Liam Horn. I'm the co-founder of a company called L4. We do all kinds of things in this ecosystem. Uh, we've been doing a lot of research on state channels, as I'm about to talk about. We've also started an organization called ETH Global, which runs hackathons all across the world. Uh, and we've, you know, in various ways, been involved in different projects in this space trying to help push forward this Web3 vision. Uh, however, as I'm alluding to, I'm also a core developer on the Counterfactual project, which I'm about to introduce to you as a separate standalone open source project that we've spearheaded uh, outside of our company. So what am I going to talk about? I'm going to explain, first of all, what generalized state channels are, because in my conversations with a lot of you over the past little while, there's, there's all kinds of little nuances that are not quite gotten, so I'm going to show the most dead simple explanation. Explain what Counterfactual is as a means of making it real today, and then describe why this stuff is pretty cool in general. And again, I have 15 minutes, so it'll be pretty quick. Um, so the background. So you're probably familiar with this concept of a payment channel, which I'm going to show kind of pictorially what that looks like. And I'm going to show you what a generalized state channel is from this basic primitive. So you've all, you've all seen this a bazillion times, presumably. A payment channel is something where you have a blockchain. And what you do is you have some number of people, let's say two, that deposit some amount of state which in Ethereum could be ETH or a token, let's just say ETH, into a contract, and they record how much they initially put in. Balance A at index zero, balance B at index zero. And over time, they message each other by signing messages, with both of them signing every message, saying what the balances are at some other uh, incremental update. So the balance of A and B at index one, at index two, and index three. And the idea is what they're doing is they're sending money back and forth to each other by signing updates of what the latest state is between them. And then whenever they're done, they're finished doing this off-chain, they go back to the contract, and they put the last signed update, the nth one, and the contract then pays them out accordingly. So this is a pretty standard concept. This is what a payment channel is. This is how Lightning works, and this is the, the basic idea. A state channel, in the basic way that you look at it, is very, very similar. It's the same setup. You have a blockchain, you have some deposit, and you have two people messaging, signing back and forth. But the difference is instead of just signing A bal, B bal, you're actually signing arbitrary state updates. So it could be a tic-tac-toe board where you're signing the board with X here, and then the board with O here, and then the board with X here, and so on and so forth. And the difference is that the, it's the same idea, you're signing state updates, but instead of A bell, B bell at state, but the contract on chain has some logic that says, whatever the last signed update is, run this function and figure out who got the money. So with tic-tac-toe, it says, figure out if there's a cross or you know, a diagonal or up and down, whatever the, whatever the line of uh, sequential X or O's is, and figure out who the winner is and send that person money. So it's a little bit of extra logic. That's what a state channel is. A generalized state channel, is a little bit more interesting. It's basically saying, we have this ability to go off chain and sign updates of things. What if we would like maximally generalize that so it's not just a bytes array or not just a bell, b bell, but something more complicated? And what if we could sign it in different orders that pertain to like a representation of something different than just one app specifically? So this is what we do in a generalized state channel. We start with the, begin the basic setup, Alice deposits, Bob deposits. But instead, as time goes on, we sign updates that let you install entirely new applications with some amount of the deposit you put into the, into the contract. So in this case, you might say, we put five in, Alice had fit five, Bob put in five, and we want to play tic-tac-toe. But also, we want to play chess at the same time with the same money. So five, maybe, like, maybe two and a half goes into tic-tac-toe, two and a half goes into chess, and you split the money in multiple applications that can be played in parallel. That's the basic idea, is instead of just like, fixating your contract to one application, allow you to reuse the collateral, the deposit you put in the contract for multiple applications. And that's, that's really it. 
That's, that's a generalized state channel. And of course, the same idea applies if you ever want to get your money back out. You can just send the money back out from the contract uh, to your regular account. But the core idea is that in the off-chain world, we want to maximize the amount of potential things you can do at the same time, such that you're not limited by any unnecessary constraints. So that's, the, that's basically it. Whenever we say all this crazy stuff about generalized state channels, it's really just describing the idea of reusing your deposit for multiple applications. So if you didn't quite get all the details of that, I recommend you watch this video, uh, l4.venture slash layer two. It's a talk from DevCon last year, which describes how this is a really uh, useful technique, and it also com com compares it to Plasma in a very nice visual, you know, not too technical way. So I recommend watching this if you haven't got the full depths of Plasma versus state channels yet. Um, so great, so I just told you what a generalized state channel is. What is counterfactual? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's an open source project, which is in a very, very critical point. We're not a company that has you know, released a token. We're not a company with a business model trying to sell you our product. We're literally just a handful of developers passionate about this technique and think that it, at scale and in production, can lead to decentralized applications being much more usable and much more user-friendly for everyday people to use, which hopefully, if that's the case, then this industry can thrive. So we're just trying to build this project. Uh, it's like any other initiative of a group of people. We have a vision and a mission. Our vision is the future where dApps don't look any different than regular apps. So you go to our website, use the application, and it should be just as fast and easy to use as any centralized application. And the mission of the, pro of the project is basically to build all of the tools that you need to make this a reality. So it's pretty straightforward. So, so what is counterfactual? What have we done so far? Uh, again, I want to get across the basic idea of the project and how you can basically ma uh, map your uh, mind around it. So I'm going to go through all the components. And the way to look at it is that we're doing three different layers of software. And it looks like this. The first is we're building a very easy to understand application library for developers of decentralized applications to use to take advantage of state channels. So in the same way that a developer that wants to make a regular application might use web3.js or ethers.js with state channels, you need to use a slightly different set of API calls and a different developer library, which we're building. The library obviously needs to work in such a way that you know, Alice and Bob can communicate to update you know, the state of whatever they're doing. So we had to devise a whole set of protocols, which I'll show you. And additionally, they need to be running software that understands those protocols locally, which I'll show you what that looks like as well. And of course, the way that all of this stuff works is that you have the guarantee that it's trustless because you know at any given point in time you can go to the chain to get your money out. And so we've written as well a full implementation of a state resolutions kind of adjudication contract set such that you can go to the chain to get your money out no matter what the scenario is. So the ELI-5, what, is, what do all of these pieces actually mean and what are we as a product, how are we actually approaching this? Uh, the goal from day one was to basically take this, this image of Alice and Bob messaging each other and research discussions and papers that were produced and actually build production level software that you know, can run on computers. And so what we've done initially is we've built this, the client notes software that I've described, uh, written entirely in TypeScript so they can run in the browser or in any kind of node environment that will basically be the case that it'll run inside of your wallet if you go to any page that happens to use the developer API. So this is software that Alice and Bob, you and your counterparty in the state channel might run that is basically built entirely for this situation that's going to enable you to use a state channel application, basically. It has things like um, making API calls to open a channel, to update the state of a channel, to take action to progress some particular part of the state, uninstall an application, all of these kinds of things that you kind of saw from the diagram earlier of what generally state channels do. And that's the first piece of software that we've written, and that's uh, now you know, easily portable in multiple environments. Uh, secondly, because it's always a little bit confusing, is we've had to devise this entire protocol of a secure transport layer between Alice and Bob that describes exactly what you need to send your counterparty to ensure that you can install an application securely or uninstall an application securely such that you can actually rely on this software working. So, and again, I'm going to point to where you can actually learn more about each of these different pieces in a bit. So what is actually inside the protocol? In the protocol, that is essentially all of the specific commitments that you need to sign to guarantee that if you were to go to the chain, you get your money out. 
So in state channels, the way that this works is if I say to my counterparty, hey, Alice, I want to install the game of tic-tac-toe, I use the protocol, which is implemented by the client node software, to say, hey, Alice, please sign the specific message that says you and I agreed to play tic-tac-toe for five ETH each. And what we're doing is I'm signing a transaction that could go to the chain. I'm asking Alice to countersign that transaction such that both of us having signed it makes it legitimate and actually executable on the chain if we were to submit it, but we never actually submit it. And again, the protocol describes precisely what these commitments look like. And the commitment is just the transaction that you sign that could go to the chain. And so both users always have in their possession these, transa these transactions, which again, the software is managing and storing for you. Uh, finally, when I say application library, I literally mean we have libraries that you can import into your application. Let's say it's tic-tac-toe, again, going with this example, that you can make it such that if you're building a UI with, say, a tic-tac-toe board that has a, you know, a click handler in the corner for placing your X, you can simply write a function call that looks like this. You know, place the piece in the tic-tac-toe board, get an object that represents the state channel application, in this case, tic-tac-toe, take an action, which is place X in this spot, in this corner, wait for the promise to resolve, which is behind the scenes using all the client node software I referred to, ensuring that you and your counterparty are signing the precisely correct commitments using the protocol I described, and then wait for the promise to resolve, and then update the UI of your app. So if you're writing a decentralized application that's instant, off-chain transactions for arbitrary smart contract logic, the end result is that you should be able to use a very dead simple, like five-year-old level API like this. So that's it. It's, that's, that's, that's really the way I want you to kind of understand how this all pieces together. It's very straightforward when you look at it this way. It's an application library so developers can build state channel-based applications. It's a protocol that guarantees correctness for all of the operations I've described, installing arbitrary off-chain applications that you can update. The node software that runs in the browser or in any other node environment. To, you know, I'll show you in a second. We have a demo environment where we have run running in Heroku that operates as a hub, and there's, there's a lot more interesting stuff you can do with that. But the most important promising part is that this is just simple software that works in any node environment. And of course, all the on-chain contracts that you could use if you need to get your money out. So, so that, that's, that's really the basics of it. And again, all of this software works today. So if you want to start building state channel applications, it's already ready for you to use. Uh, over the next little while, we're going to be spending a lot more time on documentation and showing more example applications and ways you can get started. But this is kind of where we're at. And if you want to see a demo, because I don't have a lot of time right now to go through all the details, you can go to playground.counterfactual.com, where you'll see an example where we're wrapping all of this client node software in the browser, as well as the Heroku one I mentioned that's running in the cloud, that allows you to create an account, deposit some money in, open up arbitrary applications, tic-tac-toe, we have a dice rolling game, all these things built using the developer API, and then basically play these applications. So one transaction to deposit your money in, one transaction to deposit your money or withdraw your money out. And in the meantime, you're using off-chain applications that are 100% secure by the blockchain, written in a completely isolated environment with our developer libraries, running using the client node software, which is in the browser here, um, using the protocols we've devised. And a really cool thing, and I'll have a slide for this, is that this website at the moment kind of wraps the client node software. Very soon, in the next few months, we're going to have a build ready of MetaMask that'll also run this client node software, so you won't even need to navigate to this page. You can just navigate to any website at all that uses the developer library and be able to use state channel applications. So if you want to learn more, uh, all of this code is open source. Uh, it's, 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 it's scarcely documented. There's going to be a lot more documentation, as I alluded to. Um, there's links on this site to our website where you can see more docs and the specifications of the protocol, of the node software, of the contracts. All of the details are there. And uh, we're also very actively you know, looking for contributors and people that want to help out or at least ask questions. And so if you do have any qu such questions or you want to chat with us, we also have an open Discord channel where you can come in, ask you know, any pertinent questions that you might have, or maybe you want to build an application then we can help you with it. So you can just come here for that. And um, yeah, is, is there anything that you didn't quite understand? I've given a similar talk in a lot more depth with less time constraints. Uh, you can go to l4.venture slash edcon and you can watch that talk. Um, and there's a lot of general documentation online to learn more. So um, yeah, that's counterfactual, and um, we're ready to start building state channel apps. Thanks. <laughs>